Reviewer live channel episode. Today is the 14th of July 2021 and we are resuming our live chats and there was a particular issue, a story that's been in the press recently that I kind of wanted to talk about. Uh, so we are going to get into that right away. As always it's a live chat so I will be interacting with people um, who are dropping in live. If you are watching after the stream has finished and you're watching on catch up as I say do please feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. Um, right let's just get into it. So there's been talk in the press recently about will Prince Edward the Earl of Wessex um, Prince Charles's youngest brother Will he inherit the Dukedom of Edinburgh, which was largely held as the Duke of Edinburgh, Prince Philip's own personal wish, when Charles becomes king? And there has, for the first time, been some doubt raised as to whether or not that will happen. There has been a series of articles. The original story originated from the Times and the journalist that first reported on it was Roya Nika. I don't know if, if you are aware of her but she is a very long-standing and well-respected royal journalist. So, and apparently it's come from more than one source. So what I'm going to do in the format of this video is just kind of, I suppose, briefly explain um, about what I know and then we'll read the article and kind of dissect it so i'll stop and start in bits right so when the earl of when the earl of wessex who was prince edward um well, i mean he's still prince edward but before he got his title of the earl of wessex upon marrying sophie rhys jones in 1999 i remember the wedding i watched it on tv um normally the son of or even the grandson the son and grand grandchildren of a reigning monarch are often given a dukedom upon marriage. So, the Duke of York, Prince Andrew, was given a dukedom. Prince Charles already had a dukedom, the Dukedom of Cornwall. Um, so, it was expected at the time of, of his wedding, of uh, Edward's wedding to Sophie Rhys Jones, that he would get a dukedom at marriage. However, it was expressed at the time that it was Prince Philip's own personal wish that it was Edward who would inherit the Dukedom of Edinburgh, eventually. Not straight away, but eventually. So, it was, it was accepted that Edward would get a slightly lesser title and become an Earl. And when I say lesser title, I mean in rank and style. So, he, he actually picked, he hand-picked the Earl of Wessex, which he kind of had a bit of a romantic kind of attachment to. It's a very old English... Uh, title really a, an old English geographical area Wessex itself doesn't actually exist anymore we have Essex and all the all the surrounding areas but Wessex isn't actually a place anymore it's an old geographical area and in fact I'm not quite sure of the date it actually went out but anyway the title was kind of created for Edward upon his marriage of course Sophie then became Her Royal Highness the Countess of Wessex, and we heard little else about the about the titles issue until really Prince Philip passed away slightly earlier this year. So a lot of people thought that what this meant was that when the Duke of Edinburgh passed away, that the title would immediately go to Edward. That's not the case because Prince Charles is the immediate heir. To all of Prince Philip's titles, money, wealth, unless there is anything specifically uh, bequeathed in a will. Of course, we don't know the details of Philip's personal will. But what we do know is that immediately on the point of Prince Philip passing away, Prince Charles became the Duke of Edinburgh. It's not Charles's principal title. Prince Charles is still His Royal Highness, the Prince of Wales. And of course, his his highest dukedom is actually the dukedom of Cornwall because it has all of these lands, all these moneyed lands attached to it. Um, also in Scotland, he is known as the Duke of Rothsay and basically the dukedom of Edinburgh does not trump the dukedom of Rothsay. So the, the dukedom of Rothsay is still higher, technically speaking, in rank than the dukedom of Edinburgh. So apparently Prince Charles consulted officials as to whether or not he should start going by the Dukedom of Edinburgh actually using that title when he is in Scotland. 
although it came back that the Dukedom of Rothsay was still superior, if you like, or higher in rank than the Dukedom of Edinburgh. So, basically, Charles has a lot of titles, and he does not use all of them at once. Um, he still goes by his principal title, the Prince of Wales, and when he's Scotland, he is, of course, uh, the Duke of Rothsay, and his, his moneyed lands uh, comes from the Duchy of Cornwall, the Dukedom of Cornwall, but he is still the Duke of Edinburgh. So, when Charles becomes king, when Queen Elizabeth does pass away, I know it's sad to speak about, but eventually when she does pass away, Charles will immediately become monarch on the very moment that, that Queen Elizabeth closes her eyes for the last time and takes her last breath, Charles is immediately king. Even though he's not had his coronation, that doesn't normally take place for about 18 months after the death of, of the previous monarch. Uh, but immediately, in law, Prince Charles will then be king. Um, we don't know which regnal name he will go by. He doesn't have to go by Charles. He could choose one of his other names. George has been suggested as an option that he might choose to get that separation between uh, being Prince Charles for so long and then suddenly to make that kind of metamorphosis, he may choose a different type, different name, a different regnal name. Queen Victoria chose Victoria as her regnal name. So um, when Charles is king, all of his previous titles merge with the crown, apart from, apart from the Duchy of Cornwall, which immediately passes to William as the heir to the throne. But all the other titles um, go back to the crown. It's anticipated that Charles will give out the Prince of Wales title and confer that upon William. It's not automatic, but it's believed that he will. Um, and then obviously Catherine will be the Princess of Wales as well. But in terms of the Dukedom of Edinburgh, it goes back into the crown, uh, ready to be given out again whenever Prince Charles sees fit, whether it's now or further down the line. Um, so, <clears throat> there has been for the first time talk that this might not happen, that this might not actually be Prince Charles's wish. Um, I'm just trying to find the bit in the article where I'm going to pick up from. Um, so yeah, according to the Times, the expected transfer of Prince Philip's title may not take place as planned due to Prince Charles's say over the decision. Now, yes, I think, could it be that Prince Charles is actually kind of asserting his authority? So rather than it being taken for granted that, you know, his father's previous wish uh, will actually happen, is he perhaps putting out there that actually... It's his decision and his decision alone. Is Prince Charles kind of flexing his muscles a little bit? Does he, I mean, he may not have any intention of, of not giving out to the Dukedom of Edinburgh, but is he just kind of flexing his muscles a little bit and saying, well, actually, hang on a minute, when I'm king, it's actually down to me what goes on. Um, so Edward is currently the only one of the Queen's three sons who does not hold Dukedom. I've said that. Um, yeah, uh, I've just, I'm just reading what I've already said. You, I'm just pausing because I've spoken about a lot of this. So yeah, the paper's royal editor, Royal Nika, cites a source who knows Charles as stating, and this is in quotes, so, the prince is the Duke of Edinburgh as it stands, and is up to him what happens to the title. It will not go to Edward. Curious. Another source affirmed the same message. So there's two sources saying the same thing. We don't know who the sources are. Edinburgh won't go to them, the Wessexes, as far as the prince is concerned. And again, that's in quotes. Uh, Royal Nika says that Charles, who holds the regional title of the Duke of Rothsay when he's in Scotland, asked advisers whether he himself should begin using Edinburgh. I've spoken about that. And they decided that, obviously, Rothsay uh, was more superior. So, if we look at, if we, let's just go back to those kind of quotes. Uh, again, to me, it sounds like perhaps Charles just flexing his muscles, saying, well, let, you know, hold on a minute, it is actually my decision. Even though it was my father's wish, it's, it's actually my choice and my decision. Um, but I'm trying to think of the reasons why perhaps Prince Charles wouldn't want it to go. So, as we know, titles are inherited. So if Charles was to give the Dukedom of Edinburgh 
to Edward, that would stay in Edward the Wessex's side of the family until there was a point in the line of succession for Edward, um, Edward's descendants, where uh, there wasn't a viable heir, in which case, when that happens, the title passes back up to the crown and merges again. So, obviously, Edward has a son, James Viscount Seven, who goes by the courtesy title Viscount Seven, but James Viscount Seven will inherit the earldom of Wessex. So, James Viscount Seven will have a title. Now, dukedoms, earldoms, lord titles um, do not necessarily have a royal connection. You can have, obviously, royal dukes with the the bit that makes them royal is the HRH. But, you know, we have dukes, for example, the Duke of Westminster, who is not royal, does not have an HRH. So just because you are a duke doesn't necessarily mean that you are, that you have, you know, that you are a royal duke. So James Viscount Seven will be an earl when his father passes away, when Edward passes. So it makes no difference to me, and I don't think probably anyone else, whether or not James inherits an earldom or whether he inherits... Um, a dukedom, it's kind of, you know, it's kind, it's few and far between. The dukedom is higher, of course, in rank, but to me, it kind of, James is going, is going to get a decent title anyway, so it makes no difference to me or probably anyone else whether it's a dukedom or not. Um, also, the title is not attached to any lands or any money, so James isn't going to be getting or deriving or, or Edward even is not going to be deriving any money from that title. It doesn't have any moneyed lands attached to it. Um, the only thing I can think of is that perhaps Charles wants to keep the dukedom of Edinburgh for his descendants. However, when we think about it, it wouldn't go to William because William would get the dukedom of Cornwall immediately when Charles becomes king. Then there's Prince George, who potentially... Um, you know, could get, I mean, we're talking in the future here, so the Dukedom of York is going to eventually merge back to the crown, so perhaps George could be the Duke of York, or, I mean, usually it's the second son who gets the Dukedom of York, so probably more likely that Louis will get the Dukedom of York eventually, but, um, but hey, um, George could, could get Cambridge, because Cambridge could be, would be able to be re-given, um, so I think there is plenty of dukedoms that are sufficient for Charles's descendants. So I, I don't think, thinking about it, that that is, is what Charles is thinking. I'm not sure. But also, when you look at the words, um, the prince is Duke of Edinburgh. It's up to him what happens to the title. It will not go to Edward. Has this quote been cut short? Is there more to it? Um, it will not go to Edward. Is there a piece missing? It will not, not go to Edward yet, I'm thinking, could be something that's missing. Um, because sometimes journalists do like to kind of shape and mould things to fit a story, to create something that's not necessarily there. I'm not saying that that's actually happened in this case, but it could be. Has the quote been edited? Has it been cut short? Could it actually mean that somebody was asking... Um, sources close to Prince Charles, whether or not he will give the title back to the crown to be confirmed now. But it seems to me like what they could be saying is that the title will not be given to Edward now whilst the Queen is living, and that it could be just waiting until Charles is king to be giving it out. The other quote that's a little bit curious is that uh, Edinburgh won't go to them, the Wessexes, as far as the prince is concerned. Again, I'm not entirely sure um, that I see the logic in that thinking, because why would you necessarily want to keep the title of Edinburgh um, when there are so many other titles that can be given to your own descendants? To me, it doesn't necessarily make sense. Let me know what you think. But I'm going to read a little bit from the same article from David White. So David White is the current Garter Principal Kings of Arms, the authority who serves as the main advisor to the sovereign on heraldry. He knows his stuff. 
if someone if someone knows what they're talking about it is david white so let's let's read what he has to say so he's quoted by this by the times article as saying that there's no reason for charles to immediately bequeath the edinburgh dukedom which is what i was saying uh, when he becomes king he explained george the sixth was the duke of york and when he became king the dukedom merged with the crown it wasn't granted again until prince andrew became the duke of york uh, and the Queen conferred the title, which had been in abeyance for many decades, on her second son when he married Sarah. So we've spoken all about this. So basically, um, what, I'm trying, what I think they're trying to get at is that there is no hurry. There is no immediate hurry to, for example, give Edward the title now. Um, what's more likely is that they'll wait until Charles is king, um, possibly after... Uh, Prince William has been um, upgraded, if you like, conferred the Prince of Wales until the coronation has happened. And then they might they might look at granting um, Prince Edward that dukedom of Edinburgh. Um, so a little bit more curious going on here. It's understood that Edward, meanwhile, was not under the impression that he would definitely take up the title in an interview back in June to mark so a current interview to mark the centenary of his late father's birth the prince was asked by the BBC you will be the next Duke of Edinburgh when the Prince of Wales becomes king that is quite something to take on now Prince Edward's response again very curious he, Edward replied it was fine in theory ages ago when it was sort of a pipe dream of my father's and of course it will depend on whether or not the prince of wales when he becomes king whether he'll do that so we'll wait and see so yes it will be quite a challenge taking that on so for the first time we've had edward himself say that actually well recognizing that it's actually charles's decision which is why i think there's a little bit of muscle flexing from charles here um basically saying don't take things for granted um, you know, it is my decision. I will be king. Um, and I think Edward is showing that in that little bit of an interview clip. And in fact, I overlooked that at the time as not being something particularly significant. But coupled now with the two sources saying what Charles is supposed to be thinking, then it does become a little bit more paramount. So basically, Edward is putting himself in the position of, well, if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. It's up to my brother. It's up to the future king. Um, however, it was Philip's own wish, as we all know, that Edward take on the Edinburgh dukedom. So uh, um, Sophie recalled an interview uh, to the Daily Telegraph, so a separate interview, um, on hearing of Philip's plan ahead of the couple's marriage. Sophie remembered we sat there slightly stunned. He literally came straight in and said, right, I'd like it very much if you would consider that. Um, so, yeah, the the earldom theoretically would have gone maybe to Prince Andrew at the time. But obviously, Andrew, I don't think, didn't want to wait in the same way that Edward did for a dukedom. So um, Andrew was obviously made the Duke of, of York, which is kind of customary for the second uh, son anyway but hey um yeah i think i'm just reading what what edward said so edward went on it's very bittersweet role to take on because the only way the title can come to me is after both my parents have actually passed away my father was very keen that the title should continue but he didn't quite move quickly enough with andrew so it was to us who he eventually had the conversation with. It was a lovely idea, a lovely thought. So again, saying that this title was considered for Andrew, but obviously Philip didn't express his wish quickly enough. Another point that I would really like to make is that if it really was Prince Philip's wish, which, it, which look, many sources, multiple sources, including Edward and Sophie, are actually coming out and saying, so we have no reason to disbelieve that it was Prince Philip's wish. Um, I kind of think it would be a little bit wrong for Charles, my own personal opinion, it would be wrong for Charles not to grant Philip's wish. Um, if that's what Philip wanted, if that's what Philip would have preferred, 
um, then I think it would be, it would do Philip a bit of a disservice, a bit of a dishonour, actually, to not grant Philip's wish. I get con entirely that it's Charles's choice, it's Charles's decision, it's Charles's view of a future monarchy. Um, but, hey, let me know what you think. Do you think that Prince Charles should honour his father's wishes? Or do you think that Charles should do his own thing? Um, let me know in the comment section. Right, I am going to go now to some comments and read what people are saying. Um, Kenita Danes, welcome. You have joined the channel as a channel member. Welcome to you. Also, thank you so, so much for everyone who has joined or who has been a member of my Patreon for so long. Thank you so, 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 so much. It really does help beyond watching the videos so i do include a link to patreon in the description box below if you wish to check that out um hello to everyone who is in the chat room i won't say all the names because there's um there's a lot going on um lady buckingham says if he flexes his muscles charles uh, i'll be pretty angry with him if that's his father's wish i mean i kind of feel I think I feel the I, I do. I think I feel the same way, to be quite honest. Um, Stephanie says, what a silly circus. Uh, laughing emoji and a, a tent emoji. But I'm here for it. Seems like a working Prince Edward should have a dukedom sooner than later. I mean, I'm sure it doesn't necessarily matter to Edward at this point in his life what rank or style he is. He will just quietly, as he always has done, just got on with his royal duty. Obviously, since um, since realising that his personal, private, money-making endeavours were not working, um, he obviously was uh, told to abandon them. And he did. And Sophie did as well. And since then, back in the early 2000s, they have just quietly got on with the job in hand. Um and basically dedicated themselves to a lifetime of service and duty. And I think it, it would, I think he does deserve it. I think, I think, and if that is Philip's wish, then I'm happy with that. Um, Lyle thinks that Charles should respect his father's wishes. I think that's probably what a lot of people are thinking, but I'll, I'll know for sure by reading the comments after. Laura says, thanks. This is very interesting how titles work and such. Yes, it's it's more complicated than what people necessarily think that they are. Um, Dawn says, also, there is a Duke of Edinburgh award that needs someone to be looking after it, which is a huge job. Charles does not have the time to look after that with everything else he has to do. Yes, and there already has been a kind of... Um, not a wrapping up, not a winding down, but a kind of realigning of Prince Charles's own duties and responsibilities, ready for when he does ascend to the throne, because he can't carry on doing as much as what he has been doing. Charles's role will invariably change completely. Um, but with regards to the Duke of Edinburgh Awards, it doesn't necessarily need the Duke doesn't necessarily need there to be a Duke of Edinburgh in charge of it. It could be anybody. Um, but I think it makes more sense to have uh, someone who is already involved heavily with with the Duke of Edinburgh Awards, but also that your father's wish was for you to have that title. It makes sense that that becomes part of the package in this case. But it doesn't necessarily mean that the charity... Uh, on the organisation has to have a Duke of Edinburgh, but I think in this case it makes sense that it does. Lauren says, I should imagine Prince Charles will follow his father's wishes, but let's just hope we don't find out for a long, long time. Yes, because obviously that means that the Queen will have passed away and we don't want the Queen to pass away. Um, HM the King says, hi, Ch hello, uh, says, hi, Chance Andrew will still be here when Louis marries, so the title won't be available. That is a distinct possibility. Um, but there, there are others. There, there still are other titles out there. And let's just say, we haven't seen the Dukedom of Windsor reappearing yet. So, I mean, I, I know the Dukedom of Windsor has had a long held... Do excuse me while I drink some tea before it goes cold. Um, the Dukedom of Windsor obviously has had a bit of a checkered past with its uh, one and only previous incumbent. But it is still there to be to be given out and perhaps it needs 
a new chance to have a new to have a new story attached to it, perhaps. Um, Stephanie says if Prince Charles is slimming down the monarchy, then he will then will he necessarily slim down the dukedoms? Not necessarily, because as I explained before, dukedoms do not necessarily have to have an HRH attached to them. So, um, so no, I don't necessarily, I don't necessarily see the correlation. If he's going to slim down the, the monarchy, he'll be slimming down the HRHs, not necessarily the dukedoms. Does that make sense? Um, right, I'm going to kind of ooh, skip a bit. Um, H.N. the King says, if Charles is willing to disregard this promise he made, well, did Charles make the promise? Or did Prince Philip kind of autocratically dictate that it was going to happen? Which is why I'm thinking there's a little bit of flexing of muscles going on. Because did was it actually run past Charles? Do we actually know for sure if Charles agreed with it at the time? We don't know. But I definitely think there could be this flexing of muscles. Of, well, actually, it's, it's up to me. I'll be in charge. Um... Hayton the King says, how easily will he disregard the promise he made that Camilla... Well, again, he didn't promise that Camilla would be styled um, as princess consort and not queen. What was on the website, what was announced at the time, which has now been taken away from the website, was that it was the key word, intention. It was the intention that Camilla would be styled as the princess consort. He didn't promise... Prince Charles categorically did not promise that that's what Camilla was, was going to be styled. It was the intention. As we all know, intentions can change. And it's my long-held belief that that has changed. It was removed from the website. The palace said at the time that people weren't bothered about it. It wasn't an issue, so it was removed from the website. But as I've said many, many times, it is the law. It is British law um, that the wife of a king, the wife of a monarch, is queen consort. That law has not been changed. There has not been any steps or measures to change the law. It hasn't been discussed in Parliament. It's still the law that the wife of a king is automatically queen consort. So, um, so it's my opinion that... that Camilla will, in fact, be queen because the law hasn't been changed. So that's what she will be. Um, I'm just trying to go down as well. <laughs> hey, Tim the King says, nobody wants the Duke of Windsor. I'll have it. I'll have it. I'll make a difference with it. Give it me. Um, Duke of Lancaster. Ooh, yeah. I, you know what? I haven't heard about the Dukedom of Lancaster. for a very... No, the Queen is the Duke of Lancaster. There you go. Um, Talisha says, my husband teases me all the time with the fact that Camilla will be queen. She will, unless they change the law. Um, Charles says, true, but there's nothing stopping King William V from making her queen, uh, queen mother even in death. No, Cam oh, oh, you mean Diana. You're talking about Diana here. Um, when it comes to Diana, I had a question in on the previous video uh, about Diana, about will, um, about will Charles, no, about will William um, give the HRH back to Diana when he becomes king? And the simple answer is he could posthumously restore the, the HRH. Um, so he could basically issue letters patent to say that even a divorced... Um, if you are a di divorced from a Prince of Wales, if you are still the mother of a future king or the mother of a monarch, then you retain the HRH, which then wouldn't wouldn't have any implications for Sarah, Duchess of York, uh, who, of course, lost her HRH as well, because she is not the mother of a future monarch. So I think if William was going to do it, he could do it by saying that even if you are divorced from from an HRH holder, if you like, that you still retain it if you are the mother of a future sovereign. So he could do that. Um, I doubt he would make her queen mother um, posthumously. 
but he could refer to her um, in a very old Tudor title, and I think it was Henry the Seventh um, referred to his mother as this. She was uh, made My Lady the King's Mother, so perhaps My Lady the King's Mother could have been could be a title that is delivered posthumously. But I think if Diana had lived, My Lady the King's Mother would have been a title that could have been considered. But it goes back to Tudor times, basically. Um, oh, someone said, go look at my Twitter. Well, I don't have a public Twitter, but I will have a look at it anyway, because I think someone sent me something. So let's just have a little peek and see. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, I think, right, thank you. HN the King has sent me um, a little piece from Buckingham Palace, and I think it's from at the time. So I'm going to read it from at the time when Edward was, um, was made the Earl of Wessex. So it's regarding the title of His Royal Highness, the Prince Edward. The Queen has today been pleased to confirm an earldom on the Prince Edward. His titles will be the Earl of Wessex and Viscount Seven. Of course, that's where James derives the courtesy title Viscount Seven from. The Prince Edward thus becomes His Royal Highness, the Earl of Wessex, and Miss Sophie Rees Jones on marriage will become Her Royal Highness, the Countess of Wessex. Pretty straightforward, or what we know to be true. The Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh and the Prince of Wales have also. Oh, it proves that Charles did agree. Hang on. And the Prince of Wales have also agreed that Prince Edward should be given the Dukedom of Edinburgh in due course, when the present title now held by the Prince Philip eventually reverts to the Crown. The Queen has also decided, with the agreement of the Prince Edward and Miss Rhys Jones, that any children they might have should not be given the style his or her Royal Highness, but would have courtesy titles as sons or daughters of an Earl. Now we know, of course, that it is up to uh, Lady Louise and James Viscount Seven, whether or not they choose to adopt their HRH styles when they become 18 years old, which is not too far away now for Lady Louise. So we will see what she chooses. Um, and of course, she can change her mind at any point during her life unless the rules are changed. But the crucial part here is that it does actually state that the Prince of Wales has agreed that Prince Edward should be given the Dukedom of Edinburgh. So it shows that actually he was consulted. Well, that's what it says here. Whether or not in real life, like I say before, was it more autocratically dictated by Philip? We know what Philip's like. We know what Philip's nature was. So even though I'm reading it in black and white here, I don't know. I'm I'm still thinking that's kind of palace speak, um, and maybe Prince Charles wasn't exactly consulted. Maybe Prince Charles was just informed of his father's wish, and therefore it was put there that he'd agreed. I still think that there there's something more to it because otherwise, why would we why would we be having these sources coming out? Why would we have also Prince Edward in an interview himself throwing a little bit of doubt on the fact that will he, will he not get that title? Um, again, it brings me back to my original theory. Is it just Prince Charles flexing his muscles? I still think it is. Even having read that, I still think that it's Prince Charles just flexing his muscles. But I do agree. If that was put out by the palace, even if Prince Charles wasn't exactly informed or um, his wishes were maybe not completely represented, then I agree. I think it would be a little bit of bad PR because what the palace put out still, I suppose, stands really. And Charles should, I think, um, stand by it. Um, H. the King says, I just think it's very bad PR for the palace or Charles to disregard previous announcements. Yeah, I agree. Same thing with Camilla. Well, I mean, again, I do think that the word intention was put there for a reason, because I don't think it ever was the intention for her to be known as a princess consort. Um, but yeah, I agree. I do think that Camilla should be queen, the same that every other consort has female consort has been to a male regnal monarch 
Um, Lauren says, I personally think the Palace needs new staff. It's starting to get embarrassing. Well, what I've just read that HM The King sent me was from back in 1999. So, um, I mean, hey, some of those people could still be there. Um, <laughs> but certainly if I was running things, things would be a little bit different. Let's put it that way. Um, Shaw Katili says that position of queen cannot be compromised. It needs to remain uh, regal or upgraded. Uh, I agree. I absolutely 100% agree. Um, will Camilla's children receive titles? No, because they are not of royal birth. So even if Camilla becomes queen, it's because of her association, her marriage to Charles, who always is um, the principal title holder as monarch. Um, and even now, as her husband, um, has the, as the Prince of Wales, as the Duke of Cornwall, um, Camilla's children do not receive, her own children do not receive any courtesy titles. If she had children with Charles, that's different. Those children would receive uh, the associated titles and styles. <laughs> it's in the King says, the Queen is still there. Hashtag yes, Queen. Does that need a fan flap? I think it does. There we go. So I think I'm going to leave it there. I wanted this video to be a kind of one topic discussion. Really, I didn't want us to kind of go off onto too many different tangents. So if you have enjoyed this video and it's helped a little bit, even if kind of wade through some of the mire, then give it a big old thumbs up. Please make sure to share it on social media. It does help if it get if the video gets spread around a little bit. Um, and obviously, thank you for everyone who has joined my Patreon. It really does help beyond watching the videos to have that little bit of extra support. So from me in Shropshire, until next time, to you all and goodbye.